World famous broadcaster Bill O'Reilly joins us, a world famous author as well. Have you seen his last book, The United States of Trump? It's available everywhere. It's key to understanding Donald Trump. Please check out BillOReilly.com. He's got a great newscast, No Spin News. Bill O'Reilly, welcome back. How are you? Good, Greg. Thanks for having me in. Absolutely. Vice President Joe Biden has been unmasked. Uh, he said he knew nothing about the whole Flynn situation. Apparently, he was looking at those files pretty closely. You saw the news just a little while ago. It's the latest, as I see it, catastrophe to happen to Joe Biden, who I just can't imagine getting the nomination at this point. What are your thoughts? I don't know if it's catastrophic. Um, certainly, uh, Mr. Biden is befuddled. Um, I don't know if he remembers what he's doing week to week, much less three years ago. Not making an excuse for him. Um, I'd like to know why eight days before he left the vice presidency, he wanted to know who the NSA listened to. And that's what you said was the unmasking. That's what it's all about. Why would you want to know that, Mr. Vice President? That's a key question here and it's unanswered at this point. You know, Joe Biden, one of his promises is he's uh, he's a nice guy, you know, character. He's not Donald Trump. But, you know, more and more we see these angry moments. We see where he's not necessarily telling the truth. Um, you know, everything he says he is, we're learning that he's not. I think that's a problem. And the unsteadiness that you're talking about, I mean, the Democrats are noticing it, too. Is there anything they can do? Is there anything they actually want to do at this point in terms of getting him off the ticket? Uh, there is concern. I've reported that on BillOReilly.com, and uh, I think we discussed it on Newsmax as well. There's concern at very high levels within the Democratic Party that Mr. Biden is not capable of mounting an effective campaign. Uh, he has memory problems. He cannot articulate very well. He tried to do a podcast um, with a teleprompter and a director and writers and a producer. He couldn't do it. They had to stop it. So there is concern. But the Democratic Party really can't do anything about this because people have voted for Mr. Biden and he has enough delegates unless he himself drops out. Um, and that would be a decision not made by him, but by his wife, Jill Biden. Possible. I don't think uh, the vice president is up for it myself. I've known him many years. I don't think he's a bad man. But I don't think he's in control of himself right now. And you know what? Getting out of the basement, I think, would help a lot, even though, I mean, just tell us it's his den. But the basement, I mean, it's trending sometimes on Twitter. Basement Joe. I don't think it's a good look. Bill, nobody knows the media more than you. And I want to show you this. Maybe you've heard of it by now. But I think it was just yesterday, the day before, big Rose Garden press conference. And all the reporters now are wearing their masks. And that's great, I guess president isn't, but he's being tested all the time. Yet, as soon as the cameras were turned off, what did they do? They took off their masks. It was quite a moment, and I think it highlights everything that's hypocritical about the media. Well, for some of them, I'm happy to see them wear masks, <laughs> and I hope they will continue that uh, when the pandemic is over. <laughs> that's a little, little humor. Yeah, we get you. Um, look, the White House press corps is corrupt. Basically speaking, maybe 25 percent of them are honest. The other 75 percent are doing what they're told to do by their corporate masters. The corporate masters don't like Donald Trump. They want him defeated in November. The uh, orders are to make him look bad if you are covering him in the White House. By wearing a mask in front of the news audience, it sends a subliminal signal that the virus is out of control, which is what the Democratic Party wants the American people to think. So that's why you're seeing what you're seeing. And, you know, Bill, a lot of them are motivated not just by taking down Trump, but they want to be spectacles because, you know, it's not just about getting paid by one network these days. You know, they want to get a Netflix deal. They want speaking engagements. If they can create a spectacle like that one reporter, you know, why are you specifically talking about me? And that was a viral moment for about eight seconds you know, it's it's become a performance and there's a financial incentive that I don't think they acknowledge and I don't think the audience does anything about. 
I think in the case of Jim Acosta at CNN, that's true. Uh, he wrote a book. Nobody bought it. And I mean, nobody bought it. A huge bomb. I think in the case of Weijia Jiang of CBS, who clearly loathes President Trump, I think she's being directed to do what she's doing. I don't think she's looking to do a late night show. Although if she were invited by Colbert, I'm sure she'd go on. Yeah. So it, it's the individuals there, but I can tell you without any doubt that they are ordered to take a point of view that their networks uh, want them to take. And they do, if they don't, they're not there. Bill, can I show you something? We were both there. You're the expert on Donald Trump. You've known him for decades. You wrote the book on him, The United States of Trump, available wherever books are sold. But I remember you on June 16th, 2015. We were both in Trump Tower. There weren't many reporters there. One reporter, one anchor I know, made fun of the president to his face. That would be you, uh, Bill. You didn't think he had much of a chance, correct? Yeah, and you were right. You you uh, said, I remember uh, you were doing the local Fox News then. I'm going to show everybody. He was, I'm going to show you right yeah, now. he was a player. Check Go this ahead. out. Nobody, nobody will be pushing us around. I think he might be a game changer in this race. Nobody would be tougher on ISIS than Donald Trump. Nobody. Let's listen to that speech. It's going to go over well uh, in certain precincts in Iowa, New Hampshire. This is a big deal. This is not a joke. So my analysis looking back, and, and I wrote this in the United States of Trump, is it, it's my job to be skeptical of all politicians, not to root for anybody. And throughout my 47 years in journalism, I have held that. So whether it's Donald Trump or Joe Biden, I'm going to be skeptical of them. And that's what I brought to the first day of his announcement as a commentator, as a commentator. Now, you were uh, basically reporting, and you reported accurately, that he was going to be a factor. I didn't dismiss the fact that he would shake up the race. I knew he would. But I didn't know that he would be so effective in doing it and that the American people would basically throw out establishment Republicans like Jeb Bush and go for him. I did not know that. Yeah, no, I took pains to say, look, officially, I'm not one way or the other on this, but I was blown away by the message. I've lived all over the country. I know you've lived all over the country and world. And I just knew that message would work. And I was giving my my uh, my analysis. And uh, although they made fun of me all over the place because they put that on TV that night. And uh, yeah, no, nobody saw it my way, including The New York Times, by the way. Bill O'Reilly, the one and only. Check out BillOReilly.com. No Spin News newscast. And uh, again, the book, The United States of Trump. And he tells you about that day, June 16th, 2015. It's all in there. Thank you so much, including a couple of your rides on Air Force One with the president. I want to show this one picture before we're done, uh, Bill. Go ahead. There it is. Bill, tell the folks what Air Force One is like in 10 seconds, if you can. It's an amazing experience because you're on the plane that carries the president, not just Donald Trump, but the president. And it's the most fantastic aircraft I've ever seen. Concur. And you got to go in the front. I was actually in the back with the uh, press. I never, I've never been up into the office uh, with the president. Very, very cool. Bill O'Reilly, thank you so much for coming on Newsbacks uh, to be continued.